Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas from Stream Deck. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to the new Magewell Director Mini. The Magewell Director Mini is this tiny little handheld portable all-in-one streaming device. At its core, it's an Android tablet, but it has a lot of capability and a lot of flexibility in ways that you can tie into it from outside. Now, this is the tiniest tablet, and we're gonna do a walk around of the hardware and then get into the software capabilities as well. First things first, here is the tablet. I'm actually gonna turn it on because looking at this thing with a dark screen is just a little bit unsettling. So we're gonna turn it on, mage well. Uh, on the back, I currently have it powered with two NPF batteries. These are standard batteries, have been around since 1995. The standard has been around, so there are plenty of them out there on the market. There are two batteries. It does not use both at the same time. It uses one at a time. There are little lights above these things. Eventually, it's going to indicate this one has power. This one is nearly dead because I've been using this... Um, Director Mini for a little while. There's a fan on the back here, which you can see is now spinning, and it takes air in this way and blows it out that way. If you want to use this on a table, then it really does help to have batteries to lift it off the table. Otherwise, it's sitting right against the fan and the fan can't suck any air in. So I recommend going out there. You can get two little batteries and a charger for 20 bucks. Get that. It's the cheapest little tabletop uh, accessory you're going to get. On top of the device, there's a plastic panel, probably for the Wi-Fi, and the rest of this case is metal. So um, it's actually very robust built. It's got these um, heavy corners. If you have a wood floor, I actually fear for your floor if you drop this thing. On this side, you've got HDMI 1 and 2, as well as a USB 3 port. On the top here, you've got an Ethernet port, You've got an SD card for your media playback and for recording. You also have a USB-C. Now this is can be used as a USB-C for data. It can be used to connect this device to a computer for a UVC mode, for uh, external switching camera into Teams or Zoom. And then you've got your video out. So it's also a display port out. There's also your 12 volt input. Unfortunately, this is not a screwing connector, so it can come out um, if you're not paying attention, I actually do have the power supply right here and it comes as a right angle adapter. So it's less likely to pull out, but it still would have, have, would have been nice to have a, a threaded connector. Over here on this side is your, turn it around this way. You've got your power button, another USB, headphone jack, and a combination microphone or line input jack. The combination audio input jack is designed because you're generally not gonna connect both a microphone and a line level input. If you're connecting a line level input, generally you have a mixer and that's where you're gonna plug your microphones in. So when you plug it in, it's gonna ask you what type of input that is. Now here you can see it's reversed from me. I like having these facing out from me and that puts the ports on the right, the HDMI ports, and puts the power button and everything else on the left. And then on the bottom, there's nothing to be. But as you can see, it's got a built-in accelerometer. So when you just rotate this thing, it spins around automatically. So if you're gonna be using this thing in a car or something where gravity is gonna be moving, be aware of that because um, that's actually something I don't think you can control just yet. Hopefully a future firmware update will allow you to lock the rotation. As you can see, there's not a lot of inputs on the Director Mini, hence the name Mini. There's only two HDMI inputs, but there are also two USB inputs. And one of the solutions to that is a little HDMI video capture device where you can take in HDMI and then it'll bring it in via USB. Do be aware though that these ports, because this device is so small, is actually kind of tight. So if I put this here, then it's actually in kind of infringing on the HDMI. So if you have a big HDMI connector, you may not be able to get that in there because there's not enough room. So there is another port on the opposite side here. So you could 
potentially get three or use a short USB 3 extender cable to bring that out from the Director Mini and have it out, out here on the desk. So you can get four wired inputs into the Director Mini. But there's so many more types of inputs you can bring. This is capable of NDI, it's capable of SRT, and other digital ways of bringing in cameras. Moreover, there is a phone app that you can use that will run on your mobile device, iOS or Android, and then across the local area network, come right into your Director Mini as a camera source. So that's a look at the hardware. Let's start putting this Director Mini to use. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a camera. I'm going to plug that in the side here. And immediately it pops up with a background. That's because you have the ability to replace the background with a green screen and do multiple layers in each of these inputs. They're not actually inputs, they're scenes. Fully built scenes that you can go to with a tap. I have it doing a little dissolve, and that is one of the key features of this device, the ability to build these shots, or scenes, and then go between them with just the tap of your finger. Moreover, down here, you can see I've got an audio mixer. Close that, and I have graphics as well. So I can build a lower third, and bring it on the screen, and take it off the screen. Again, with just the tap of your finger. There's more capability in here as well. We'll get to that in a minute. But let us go back to our cameras, turn the graphics off. I've got my cameras here. So let me rebuild this so that you can see what it's like to bring in a camera source. I'm gonna take HDMI one. This is what the camera really looks like. I have a green screen behind me. Over here on the left, you've got layers, you've got music, you've got your audio mixer, the position on the screen, your size, how much you're going to crop it, if you want to put a border on it, if you want to put a label on it, flip it horizontal, flip it vertical. Your transition for this scene. How do you want this scene to transition and transition out? What type of chroma key, your PTZ control if you're dealing with an NDI camera, and how do you want to save this format or load the format from something else? Over here, this is how you're gonna deal with your layers. Move it up, move it down, or trash that layer. So, talking about layers, I've got this, think of it as a plane. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna cut away this green here and put something else behind. So, let me make sure I got a card in here with media. All right, we're gonna add a layer. We're gonna add an image, a picture. We're gonna to go to my SD card, and then I have backgrounds. We're gonna say still, and then come down here, modeled back, there we go. So that's that background. You can see it's not 1080p. So you can resize it, you can rotate it. I'm gonna make it big enough to cover. Now you can see it's covering me. So it's in front of the layer that includes me. I'm gonna move it back. Now it's behind me. What do I need to do now? I need to cut away the green. So we're gonna go into our chroma key. So let me select the layer in front. There we go. Now I can do a chroma key. And it immediately just grabs the green and gets rid of it. And now I've got this background behind me. So I've got the red background over here in this show. And I've got this modeled gray over here in this show. That makes it very simple. We're gonna save that. So now you can see I've got this black background and I've got the gray background. That's how simple it is to build a scene in the Director Mini. And I'm gonna add. So add, and you can see I got an HDMI 1, HDMI 2. It calls them Webcam 1 and Webcam 2, but that's whatever comes in the USB. You can add a video clip. Let's do that too. Let's go into, let's go up. Oops, nope. Add, video clip, parent folder. Let's do countdown. Let's do my 15 minute timer. Loading. And there you go. I've got my 15 minute timer. It's the right size, save. So there's my video clip. Each source that you bring in also has additional settings and capabilities that you need to look into to really maximize your usage of the Director Mini. For instance, I've got this video. I go between my camera and I go between the video. 
it doesn't do anything. So let us press and hold, and we're going to edit this. Now, we come over here to my actions, my start action. It says manual start. I don't want it to manual start. I want it to start automatically. So we say auto start. End action. What do I want it to do when it ends? Go to black or repeat the video, stay on the last frame, go to the first frame, hide the video, switch to a pip, switch to HDMI 1. So let us switch to a pip. Switch action. After it switches, do I want it to rewind to the start or just pause? I'm going to want, to want it to rewind to the start and then I'm going to save. So now, save, when I go to here, I'm on my camera, and then when I go to the video, it just starts playing. That's the action that I want, but you get to determine all that. The downside with the fact that you get to determine all that is you have to determine all of that. So it takes a little bit of doing to make all these things do what you want them to do. It doesn't happen automatically because every person who uses this is going to want it to do something different. Next up, let's add an NDI camera. To do that, I've got this handy little Mevo Start. I mean, we're talking with the tiniest little tablet. I have one of the tiniest little NDI cameras on the market today. I am going to turn this on right here. There you go, it gives me a little beep. These little cameras are, NDI is included when you purchase the Mevo Starts. So there's a battery in here, there's a lens in here, there's a circuitry in here, microphones on top. You can even do record in here. These are HD NDI cameras or NDI HX cameras, I should say. So let me just put that right here, aim it at me. Hello. Now that I have it here on the table, I am gonna come down here and I'm gonna add an NDI stream. I'm gonna say, look around. It sees I have a bird dog camera and here's my Mevo start. Let's add the Mevo start. There it is. Hello camera. Now, one thing to mention though is your HDMI camera is going to be ahead of your NDI camera because NDI has to be compressed in the camera, go around the network, come into the director mini and be uncompressed. So I always say NDI is great if you are all NDI or if you use NDI as sort of accent cameras to your wired cameras. So if you're wired, your wired cameras and your NDI cameras are not gonna match timing wise, as you can see here. The timing is going to be a little bit behind on the NDI camera, but this is indeed the camera that is working. I can, again, because it's a scene, I could do a chroma key, I can do all kinds of different effects here, and then I also have the ability to do PTZ control. I'm going to save that, even though this is not a PTZ camera per se. Save. Save. So if I go to that camera, there you go. And if you are doing a camera that has PTZ control, I've got the PTZ controller right there. You can call that up. You can move the camera around. You can zoom in. Do, 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 do. And then in this zoom, I can tilt it up a little bit. There you go. Oh, it's moving very slowly. Like that. And then I can store that as number one as easy as that. Let me exit that. There's a little X. Go back to my main camera. And that way I have an alternate view that I can cut to here. Look, you know, I could point it down here. That's actually a good idea. Let's point it down at the director mini that I'm showing. This way, as I was saying, your audio sync is not going to matter. I can show you some detail here and I can go between me talking about it and then I can go between the close-up of it. And this is a great way to show you, you know, check out this, this thing right here. Let's just say I want to use that in a multi-view. I made a multi-view over here. Let's go into this pip. And again, you just press and hold. You can bring up the edit menu. Now I got these two things. This says HDMI 2, no signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. I select it, hit delete. Now I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to say my NDI stream. Gonna say the Mevo, there it is. Now I can put this over here on the right. See how it's actually giving me um, guides to help me get this alignment just right. There you go. And then I want to give it a frame. It's a nice frame, but now I can see it's a little smaller. Let me get a little bigger like that. 
and then we can do the corners. We can round the corners a little bit so that they match. And then, you know what I also want to do? I also want to add a layer of a picture. Let's go into the parent folder, stills. Let's see if I can find something. Uh, see if that works. That works. And then we make that really big. And then we send that to the back, send it to the back. There we go. Save. Now here's my multi view. And you can see I can talk to you just like I'm doing in this show. But here I have the ability to do like little customizations, the spacing of the images, the rounded corners and things like that. I can do titles and everything. And that's all pre-built into that scene. And then you can use these multiple times in multiple different scenes. I could be on the opposite side. I can do all kinds of things like that. So if you press and hold this, you can see I can copy this and I can call it pip two copy. Now I've got pip one and pip two. Let me go into pip two and edit it. So I can move this over here. Actually, let me move this there. Put this here, or let's just say I want to have more content at the bottom. So I can rearrange this a little bit. And again, those guides show up to help me do that. And then I can put a title at the bottom or another graphic. Let's just say it's a, a conference. I can have conference information across the bottom of the frame here. I don't have that graphic pre-made, but I'm just saying that's an example. And now I could go between that graphic, this graphic, I can go between here or here to this graphic. It's as simple as just tapping your finger. And that's what makes this thing so really usable. Another really amazing feature with this, and it's kind of a hybrid, I think, because there have been tablets that allow you to bring in wireless phones. But the problem with those is you couldn't do any wired cameras. This one lets you do both. And it's super easy to do. It's going to leverage this app right here, the Director Utility on iOS and Android. Let's launch this. It's going to boot up. This enables you to both do a remote assistant, which lets you dial into and control your Director Mini from another device, which we'll get to in a minute, and also be a phone camera. We're gonna launch that, but it's gonna come up and say, there's no camera created. Now this might not make sense at first, but what you need to do is you need to go over to your director mini, say you're going to create a phone camera. We're going to call this not camera one. You're really going to want to name these something in particular. Let's just call this handheld H A N D H E L D handheld done high, medium and low. There's advanced settings, which we won't get into here. We'll say create. Now I've got this layout again. It's a scene you can do you know, overlays, picture, picture, background, you can do all of that. We're just gonna leave it clean, just as an input, save. That's available. Now, if I bring this over, you'll see handheld now shows up on the device. What this means is you can pre-create multiple, you know, phone inputs. You can name them and then put them into picture and in pictures in different scenes. Then when that camera is connected, when that phone is connected, it'll automatically populate all those things and it's repeatable. So we're going to add this camera here. It's going to pop up. You see it came up right there and I'm going to rotate sideways. <clears throat> and here you can see I'm moving around. There's the director mini and that is coming from my phone right here. If I move it in front of you, you can see the interface. Let me put the interface over top. Now, right here, you can see I've got a little zoom indicator. I've got a light on, light off. I can turn the mic on. I can turn the mic off. I can come over here. I can close this and I can even flip cameras. I'm not going to flip cameras. Now, one other interesting thing is when someone has this in their hand and they're operating the handheld, they want to know when this camera is active. So when you select it, you can see it now comes up in the program right there. I would have preferred a big bar, big red box all the way around it, but this is better than nothing. And this way, you know, when this camera is up, then when you go away to your other camera, that program goes away. It bears repeating that because this is, let's go right here. You can see because this is a wireless camera, 
Again, there's a delay because it has to be compressed in the phone, sent across the local area network, uncompressed in your streaming device, and then it's able to work with it, which is a much slower process than having the image come off the sensor quickly out an HDMI cable and directly in. So you can see the delay between the two devices. So again, don't be pointing them both at the same talking subject. You might want to use this as your cutaway camera, like I was using the Mevo Start before. You could have down here. So if I wanted to show you, oh, and as you can see right here, da 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 da, I can talk about it and then come back to me, and then I can talk about it, and then I can come back to me. And that's where these additional viewpoints become really beneficial. For sports or instruction, one of the really cool features with the Director Mini is the ability to draw on the screen. We typically call this a telestrator. So if I wanted to show you something with regards to, let's just say this input, I could bring up the telestrator, the pen, and I could say, okay, this logo right here needs to move up into this corner. And that way I'm able to really draw right on the object, which is great for presentations, slides, pictures. That's where that can really come into play. It's sort of like being able to do with a laser pointer on the screen, you're able to do it right here in the Director Mini itself. So we've done a brief overview of graphics creation, various sorts of inputs, layers, drawing on it, but let's dig into the menus just a little bit. I'm not going to overwhelm you. This is not an in-depth Director Mini. That'll come later. I just want to introduce you to some of the things that you can really control with the Director Mini. So up here on the left hand side, you can see I have the ability to create a show right here. I can name it. I can choose if it's 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 frame rate and everything cancel. Once, one of the things you can do is once you've created shows, you get a show list. You can see I've got default shows, my awesome show, my vertical show, and the one that I'm doing right now, which is this default 1080p 30 show. Your album is going to be all the different videos that you've done all the different images that you have available. You can send feedback from the device and there's even help right here on the device itself. So it's pulling this over the internet. So if you don't have access to the internet, you're not going to be able to access this stuff, but it's able to be, hey, that pen, how do I access the pen? Annotate on the screen, screen pen properties. That's really handy to be able to get you up to speed, especially when you're, you know, when you're in the middle of creation and you're, you, you come up against something, ooh, the pen, I want to use the pen. Ooh, but I don't know how to use the pen. There's a little bit of help available. If you've got connection to the internet, there's a little bit of help available right here. You don't have to like try and track down a tutorial or go to an online manual. It's like you can see it right here on the face of the device, right where you're using it. And then right here, this is your settings. We're going to dig into the settings and you come up to this settings screen. That's not the only way you can get to settings. If you drag from the top, you can see you get a, an, a status telling me what, what connections I have available, cellular, uh, my Wi-Fi, my Ethernet or Bluetooth. I have the ability to control my headphone volume and the brightness of the screen. It tells me I'm plugged in. It tells me this would be my streaming status indicator right here. My inputs, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, my webcams, my NDI. You can see my NDI source right there. It's disconnected. And then up here in the corner, there are two icons. One is for your monitor. Now, remember, on top, there is this output, which I haven't yet connected, but I'm going to do that now. If I plug that in, what that, that's going to do is that is going to give me the ability to have program out from this device. But again, I can choose, do I want clean program? Do I want to duplicate this screen? Like when I do these tutorials, that's what I prefer. Or I can take the HDMIs and just zip them right through isolated. You can also do flipping and rotating if you needed to, but I'm just going to duplicate this screen for now. So I'll go select that. Then you've got your gear icon. Takes you to the same settings screen that you get to from the hamburger icon. You can adjust what your network settings are, your Bluetooth, your display. Again, same pretty much settings right there, your audio settings. Now, this is where you can get in and you can set up Bluetooth earbuds and adjust your input delay. And also one of the really cool things is if you're doing a show and you need people to be able to hear this, but you don't want them to hear themselves, one of the things you can do here is you can send the mo output microphone to the monitor sort device. If you're coming in from an external mixer, 
you know, let's just say you're doing a conference and you want the people on stage to be able to hear the audio from here, but you don't want the audio coming in to also loop back out, you turn this off. That's a really cool feature. So now all the microphones being mixed on stage come in, but they don't get looped back out. And you can take the headphone out of this and feed the audio mixer on stage. So any sort of video playback or remote cameras or anything like that, that will get played to the stage, but the microphones from the stage won't loop back out. We kind of call this mix minus. And mix minus is really useful in being able to integrate streaming technologies into a live event in a way that the audio doesn't create this loop back, this feedback loop that just creates an annoying whine. That's where this really comes into play and makes this even more usable for live events in person as well. You've got your storage setting. There's actually internal storage that you can use before you even add a USB stick or an SD card. I prefer to use the removable media, but remember that, there's all, that there is 64 gigabytes of space inside the Director Mini as well. Now, the Director Mini comes with two encoders. You can encode two, two separate streams. So you can, for instance, stream at a low bit rate or record at a very high bit rate at the same time these two different encoders can be leveraged by you to do whatever you want. If you want two different recordings, you could do that. You can have a low bit rate recording and a high bit rate recording and be able to email one very quickly, whereas the other one you can save for production. That's how you want to use it, is how you can set these things. Right here, encode one, you can sit there and say how you want it to be encoded, Change your settings from H.264 to H.265, the resolution, your frame rate, your video and audio encoding, and there's advanced settings. Again, I'm not going to get again into every little detail. Encode 2 looks the exact same way. Your stream settings. You can say where you want it to go, and when you sit there and say, oh, okay, I want it to go to Facebook Live, you're going to send, you're going to send Encode 1 or Encode 2. That's where those come into play. Next one up is your record. Your record one, your record two. If you go into record one, which one are you recording? Encode one or encode two? Again, this is where they go. You set your two different encodings and then later you decide where you want them to go. You can, if it, if it works for you, you can actually have just encode one be both your stream and your record settings and then encode two be an isolated record of just the wide camera or something like that. Your scene switch settings, it's basically where you say you wanted to fade and how fast. The back LED lights. This is an interesting little feature. You can use them as battery indicators or if this, you're using the NDI output of this device as a source for something else, you can use those as NDI tally lights, red when it's on and green when it's off. The USB Type-C, again, we talked about using this as your monitor output, but you can also use it as a display port with a hub. You can also use it as a UVC camera direct to a computer. And lastly, your basic system settings for language, date, time, firmware. This is where you would basically go in, check your firmware, and it will update on the device itself. The screen itself is even customizable. Let's look at that. Over here on the right, you've got a camera icon so you can just snap a picture. It's handy during a show you want to snap pictures of the program. You can do it right here on the device. Click. There you go. I saved that picture. This is your record button. This is your stream button. Now over here, I've got my audio mixer and my graphics indicator. If I go to this custom, it says I have my volume control, graphics, and my PTZ. So if I am using something that has PTZ control, that will pop up. I can also choose to add a pen, Becker monitor, live comment, scoreboard, timer, stopwatch, fade to black, freeze, scene switch, rearrange. You can do all these different things. One of those things, rearrange, allows me to make these icons smaller so I can have more on the screen or larger. And I can also take them and move them around. So I'm able to customize those things I need most and put them closer together, making it easier for me to do a show. Got it. Done. Then also, if I just tap the screen, everything clears away, except for this top little gray bar at the top, where it shows me my status and my audio. 
but it's nice to have a nice clean look without any you know, overlays and, and stuff cluttering it. So when if I have graphics up and I bring this up, I can't really see it because my interface is in the way. But if I tap this, now I can see what the program looks like, nice and clean. And if you are outputting the program out to another screen, you're always going to see the clean view. But if you're outputting the interface to a second screen, it's good to be able to clear that up with just a tap of the screen. With all of that, the Mini is a great package. It's so portable, easy to use, and does so much. But there is actually so much more. Let's go back to the iPhone app. Remember when I talked about this utility and I said there's the remote assistant? That is a way that you can control what goes on here from a separate screen. Click on remote assistant. It finds the director Mini on the local area network. We're gonna to connect to it. And now you can see all my sources and I can switch the sources. I can go to the video. I can go to the picture in picture. I can switch camera sources. I can switch to my graphics. I can actually, let me go back and go to the main camera and go to the graphics. And it says, this is up. I can take that out. I can bring a different graphic in. I can bring a different graphic out. I can leave this just clear and do my switching from my second screen here. That is very cool. I can activate my screen controls. I can work on my recording controls. And I also have, let me move this over. I have my audio mixer. Here's my program, my monitor, my mic, my HDMI 1, HDMI 2. All my inputs are here. I can bring my monitor up. I can take the program level down and you can see it change over here. I can bring the audio level back up. You can see it increase over here. So these are working very, very quickly and it's not limited to one device. I can have one device just set up with the audio mixer and come back here. I can be switching cameras and I have my audio mixer up over here and just leave them like that. Or I can have a second device set up with the graphics so that I don't have to toggle back and forth between the graphics and here. That second screen even enables you to hand that off to another person so that one person can be focused on just what is happening with the video and switching cameras and managing things and someone else can be in charge of adjusting the audio or bringing up the titles for people who walk on stage, especially like an award show where you may have dozens of people who are gonna come on. Giving that task to someone else makes your production so much more reliable because you're dividing the tasks. Now you've got two brains focusing on two tasks as opposed to having to divide one brain back and forth between multiple tasks. But wait, there's more. Using a laptop or other computer on the network, I can go to director mini dot local. It'll look on the local area network and find my director mini here. Then I can log into it. Once you are logged in, you are then able to see the same settings that you can on the Director Mini. You can then produce because then you can see the main program screen, all your inputs, and your titles. So not only can you switch your inputs right here, click the video, click the NDI input. You can also bring in a title, take out a title, switch cameras. And where's that multi-view? Let's scroll over here to the left. There they are and bring in the multi view and it's using the same settings that are built into the device, which are able to see both your sources and the titles on one screen here. More importantly, over here on the right, there's some shortcuts so that you can add shortcuts to those tasks you do more often and assign them to a hardware interface that you have connected to your computer, like an Elgato Stream Deck. Those things are incredibly useful and being able to have a tactile surface that you don't even have to look at to be able to switch between tasks makes using the Director Mini even easier. Continuing down the list, you can access your encoding settings, your streaming settings, your recording settings, your background music settings, your browse all your different media on accessible on the device, and of course, your system settings. So you can see not only can you access it directly on the device, not only can you access it through uh, Android or iOS interface on a tablet or a phone, but you can also access it remotely on a computer on the same local area network. But wait, there's more. I'm not going to demonstrate it, but there's also cloud control so that you can access this device 
through a cloud access point from anywhere in the world. That takes a little bit more doing, but it's available as an option for those people who need it. So I hope this has been a good overview of the Director Mini for you. If you found this useful, share it. It really helps us out as we grow this channel. And subscribe, because I have many more tutorials on the way. My name is Anthony Barocas for Streamtech. Thanks for watching.